we have Chapter 2, The Cursed Inheritance, The Murder at the Little Mermaid. Let's go in. Chapter 2, Cursed Inheritance, Murder at the Little Mermaid is Part 1, I suppose. So this is, I guess, an establishment where people can spend the night. Uh, trap door in the ceiling. Okay. Okay, this person. Revenge on the wall. Mm. RR. RR initials. What do we have here? The man is not breathing. You don't say. Now, they have a ring with a ruby. We haven't really figured out what's going on with these rings with rubies all over the place, but they're clearly important in some way. A walking cane, and he's, yeah, still not breathing. On the table, we have Dear Proud Beast Master. Proud Beast Master. Hmm. I have attended our departed brother's send-off and accepted the keepsake that he bestowed upon our brotherhood as well. Ah, I shall send this letter tomorrow, September 10th. I hope it will reach you without delay. Already it is midnight. I will retire to my bed for this has been a long day. May, may Griffin awaken, proud beast, and initiate. So, alright. Willem, what was his name? Willem... Hold on, I'm actually going to go back. Go back to the previous chapter, just have a look at this real quick. This gentleman right here. He received the golden idol, and he was an unknown person according to the lawyer. So here are the, like, direct relatives. And then Willard Wright, that was his name. Some random person got the golden idol. And then he knew how to use the golden idol to set somebody on fire. So something kind of weird going on there. Now in chapter 2, right away we have a thing talking about an initiate and having received the keepsake that he bestowed upon our brotherhood in his will. So putting two and two together, I'm guessing that Willard Wright is the pr Proud Beast initiate here? So is he the dead person? Possibly. Or was this a letter sent to Proud Beast Master? What else do we have to see? Oh, there's a person down here. What? Alarm, alarm, a break-in. Watchman Henry Parker. Watchman number two, Henry Parker. Alarm rattle. Oh, okay. Watchman's lantern and a spear. Apparently a spear is important. Okay. Didn't expect to see that out there. Over here we have another trapdoor. So there's a trapdoor leading across. An empty bed, not warm. And there is somebody out here. Why did that bugger give me a note when he knows damn well I can't read? Okay. You can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman's place down at the docks. A loaf of bread. And an old rusty half of shears. What's going on now? Oh, there's people down here. All right, well, let's just finish looking at the clues up here first. So some guy, I mean, this guy, is he running away? Hmm. There's a picture of flowers on the wall and there were a picture of other flowers, but different color over there. This door, the door does not open. The door does not open, even though it has a key in it. Okay. The doors don't open. Maybe the guy went through the trapdoor, he did this revenge thing. There wasn't anything else to see here, right? Not breathing. Okay. Alright, let's check the downstairs. So downstairs we have some happy people. They didn't hear anything, I suppose. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Says the bartender. Dear Oscar Baden, it has come to our attention that the good owner of the Little Mermaid offers services to those who want to transfer products that are less agreeable to the authorities. I will come by in three days. If you still have some spare space in your gin barrels and you are willing to earn extra money, reach out to me. September 8th. Do we know what day we are today? Anything on the wall? At the Little Mermaid Inn, Amazing Evans Musical Performance on September 9th. Event shall commence circa 11pm. So, Amazing Evan. I'm guessing this is Amazing Evan right here. Oh, mother, forgive me. I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. Okay. A violin, a key, and a, a Navaja folding blade. Alright. Wanted. Robert Redruth. Escaped convict. Reward 56 pounds. Now, Robert Redruth, I'm guessing this is the person that was outside the window. He doesn't look very friendly. Just going by his dark eyes and grimace. Hang on, let's have a look out here. I mean, that's gotta be him. That's gotta be him. So, Robert Redruth. Outside the, door, the window. We'll definitely want his name at some point. 
In fact, can we even... Let's just do this. Robert Redruth. I'm going to guess that's him. And we'll go back to... Not this guy, but the Amazing Evan's performance. Amazing Evan. Do you have anything else on him? We have a first name. We don't have a last name, though. The door to the street is shut with a latch. And there's something in here. September 9th, Dandelion Room, Willard Wright, one night. Aha, I was right. That must be Willard Wright who got stabbed. Forget Me Not Room, Ash Blair, one night. Ash Blair. Okay, possibly one of these people. Tell me, what does that man have that I lack? Um, you have a hand of cards. Does he have a full house? He, a small sword. Okay. Be calm, John. He was a perfect gentleman. He brought me a he bought me a drink and then retired upstairs. To Annie, you are beautiful like a rose. For you, I will take any blows. Annie, you are like a glass of wine. Your hair is very fine. I will find gold in a mine if that will make you forever mine. Your pig's lit full of love. Not the greatest poet. We have a stiletto blade. Everybody's got weapons on them. A key and two shillings and four pence. Just deal- oh, this guy, this is the coachman. Just deal the next one, it's all luck anyway. Alright, a hand of cards. Ooh, remember you as an- remember you are- what? Oh, sorry, remember you as an agent of our trading company have to reflect its values to the fullest. One, never be late, the client leaves your port- leaves the port on the 10th. Be persuasive, do not take no for an answer, we must get the client's product. Be effective, once you have the product, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. Most importantly, no matter what you do, be mindful of our reputation. Our names must remain spotless. The client leaves the port on the 10th. Hmm. Is this... Hang on. So looking, he's got a he's got a bit of a mustache. Kind of a large jaw. Relative to the rest of his head. Balding a little bit towards the front. Does that match? We go back to previous chapter. Does that match this guy? Yeah, yeah, it's totally him. It's even the same sprite and everything, he's just got a hat on. Okay, and we knew that this person was named David Gorin. So let's go back to chapter two. I don't know if I'm really supposed to be going back and forth between chapters, but hey, I'm going to use all the information I can get. Uh, oh, his name was David Gorin. So we'll right, we're going to want that name for sure. We're going to want that name. And, oh, tab, Green, Breeze, and Blair. One glass of wine, three glass of wine, and four glass of wine. Now, none of these. Hmm. These are the three people, right? So he's, he's going under a different name then. I've already forgotten. Sorry. Let me go to back. It's David. David what? David. David Gorin. Right. David Gorin. But the tab indicates that there is no gore in here. Hmm. Okay. On the table, this clue has been added to the thinking panel. Okay. We have some glasses of wine, and we have what looks like a cipher. What is this? A G W W. So W W. We can guess that's the right guy. M E A G again. J B O B. Is that an O or a Q? That's an O, right? A G J B and A B. So they're keeping score. Willard Wright retired to his chambers. And I'm assuming this is him who got stabbed. Because that would make sense to me, given the note here. Oh, I didn't realize there's stuff here. A washing bowl filled with slightly bloody water. Okay. And there's something down here too. Oh, there, there are more clues I didn't realize. To my dear Maurice. Really? The watch is ticking. Oh. Oh. Okay, so it's a music box. Hmm. Okay, this must be what the golden idol is being kept in. I would guess. And this person out here. Oh, he, this broken glass. Shards of glass lie in the mud. Okay. So he's doing his little alarm thing. Clack, 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 clack. And he's got a spear and a light. Do we need to know anything about him? Henry Parker? I mean, can I pick that up? All right. Let's fill him out. There you go. Henry Parker. 
Unless he's got some other guy's signal. But I doubt it. I kind of want to just put Willard right here. I'm not actually absolutely certain that that's Willard right though. I feel it's a bit of a red herring, but we're going to put his name in anyways. Uh, it's, I mean, Willard Wright's not any of these people. And she said that you retired upstairs. So the only other real explanation is that this was Willard Wright's room here. Empty bed, not warm. I'm not quite sure what the flowers are meant to indicate for us. Is there no... Yeah, there's no interactables in the attic there, right? It's not like... Willard is hiding up there. Hmm. You can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman's place down at the docks. Hmm. R R. Proud beast. So I'll send this letter tomorrow, September 10th. And we are currently in September 9th, so so it must be that he wrote this letter and then got stabbed. Makes sense. Parted brother's send off and accepted the keepsake that he bestowed upon her brotherhood. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So back down here, we have Willard Wright staying for one night and Ash Blair staying for one night. Forget me not room. So is Blair one of these? Blair is one glass of wine. Were we able to see on the table? We see one, two, three glasses of wine. This person's holding a glass of wine. This person, what is he holding? He has a hand of cards and something else in his hand. He has a key. Given he has a key, none of these people have... Oh yeah, this person has a key. Never mind. I was about to say something, but that is irrelevant because they all have keys. Okay... Okay, well let's look at what we have to fill out. Oh, oh, I see, here. So we need to figure out who these people are, I suppose? Let's say Willard Wright. Uh, that takes away the Willard, hang on. Willard Wright, let's use that. Willard Wright, makes sense to me. And then Blair. Isn't it Ash Blair though? Evan, Ash Blair. A.G. OB. Alright, so that might not be Willard Wright. This might be standing for something else. Okay, so somebody crept into somebody's room through the window. Although, really? Wait a second. Through the attic. What am I saying? Through the trap door. Uh, while three people were playing cards with loud music, a fight ensued upstairs and somebody got stabbed. Willard Wright got stabbed. With a... We actually don't know what he used. So let's go back up. Who's this guy holding? Uh, rusty half... Sh a shear. Again, this might be another red herring. But I'm going to put it in. Because that's what it looks like. And these three people who are playing... Now we have Blair. But Blair only had one glass of wine. And we see that this guy's already ha on his second. So that can't be Blair, right? Oh wait, she said John. Be calm, John. This guy is John. Okay. So we have John, John Green, not John Blair, it's Ash Blair. Breeze, she must, John Breeze. Wait a second. What does it say? Oscar Baden. Okay, so this must be Oscar Baden right here. So I, I should take that. He's got a partially peeled lemon for some reason. A large kitchen knife and a ring of various keys. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Who is he referring to? That might be important. Hmm. It's come to our attention that the good owner of the Little Mermaid offers services who want to, to those who want to transfer products that are less agreeable to the authorities. So they're talking about some gin barrels for smuggling stuff. Hmm. Well, Oscar Baden, let's fill that in just before I forget here. And this guy is Evans. We don't know if Evans is a first or a last name. Probably a last name, right? I... 
Robert Redruth, we did get that already. Amazing Evans musical performance. What was he carrying? He had a violin, a key, and a knife of some kind. Oh, mother, forgive me. I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. Hmm. To Annie. Let's take that. Your piglet full of love. And why am I assuming that it was Willard that went upstairs? What's interesting is that this guy's going by a different name now. Hmm. And then we have these initials and scores. Quite a few games played by these three. And then a few games here, and then the fewest games right there. Okay. Three glasses of wine on the table. And this thing said four glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, and one glass of wine. Is it fair to say that if this guy is going by the name John, because she's referring to him when she says to be calm, and there's an Ash Blair. Ash is not a... F uh, is it a female name? Ash short for Ashley? No, no, no. Sorry, she's not Ash. She's Annie. Right. So, is it fair to say that this guy is going by the name Ash Blair? Since we saw Ash Blair um, right here. Forget me not room. Let's put that down. Ash Blair. Even though we know that he went by a different name before. And this lady was Annie. We don't know the second name. We know that this guy is John. Okay. Um, Robert Redruth. This is what I'm going with. Crept into Willard Wright's room. While these people, so we had a, a John, an Annie, and an Ash Blair. I don't know about that one. Playing cards with loud music. A fight ensued upstairs and Willard Wright got stabbed with a spear. With a shear. With a shear. Okay. Do we have a different name? Willard Wright, forget me not, room is Ash Blair, and that's it. Any other last name around here? The door to the street is shut with a latch. Is that relevant? Evans. Or Red Ruth. Hmm. So Annie... Oh, Annie G. Ah, Annie G. Green. Annie Green. John B. Breach. There we go. So... Annie Green and John Breach. The scroll is not filled in correctly. Okay, alright, I, I messed up. So, we'll, we'll figure that one out after. But Annie Green and John Breach. And we're missing Evan's first name. Okay, the number... The amount of wine didn't matter, it was just there for the names. That's funny. So, what do I not actually know about this? I, I jumped to some conclusions, right? With Willard Wright and all that. We don't know that they came in through the trap door. The window was broken for some reason. I don't think they climbed in through the window, though. There'd be a lot more blood going around if that were the case. We're assuming that they went through the trap door, but maybe not. I mean, it could be the window, it could be the door. If we go look again, how likely is it that they came through the window? It is open. But then why is it broken? It was broken so they can undo the latch. Mm. They snuck in through the window 
and then went up through the trap door and left. Well, why did... No, they didn't latch the window behind them. Is this guy unrelated to the murder? Maybe this guy's not even related at all. Why did that bugger give me a note when he knows damn well I can't read? Hmm. Because he couldn't have latched the window after himself. I don't think this is related to the current murder. Might be related to something later on though. Revenge RR. So RR, Robert Redworth. Makes sense. But how did he get out afterwards? Okay, hang on. Let's change this over to window because window is more likely than trap door. Still not filled correctly, but that's okay. John Breege. I mean, this guy's saying that a break in. Was it a break out? No, because why would they need to break the window if they were getting out? So he must have snuck in using the window. He's carrying a walking cane? Okay. And the clock is ticking to my dear Maurice. Is it Maurice Evans? The watch is ticking. And this guy was saying, I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. What an odd thing for him to be saying while playing music. The event begins around 11 p.m. We don't have any idea what time it is, except that I guess it would be 11 p.m. or later, given that the event has begun. Is it fair to say this is Maurice Evans? Okay, it is. Why was his watch upstairs? Oh! This is not Willard Wright's room, this is Maurice Evans' room. Hold on, hold on. Let's have a look here. Maurice Evans is playing the fiddle or the violin downstairs. This, I'm assuming this is his room because there's a pocket watch in here that says it's to him. But then, was he the Proud Beast Initiate? No, this must be a letter from Willard Wright. This here must be Willard Wright. This is not a two-person bedroom. But me... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are the flowers relevant? One flower, two flowers. I don't think they're relevant. Could be wrong. Hmm... Well, this has taken me some work. Okay, John Breege, Annie Green, and Ash Blair are playing cards. We know that's true. A fight ensued upstairs and Willard Wright got stabbed with a shear. We don't know that that's true. It might not have necessarily been a shear. Although that's the only weapon that would have been in the area, assuming that Redford and Wright were the only ones around here. Washing bowl filled with slightly bloody water. So Robert Redworth crept into Maurice Evans' room. Now I, I did change this around, but we can try putting uh, Willard Wright in here again. Through the window. I think saying it happened through the window is a pretty fair assumption. Oh, yeah, hang on. We can actually fill in these in. Annie Green is in here a few times. Annie Green, Annie Green, Annie Green. She's been playing the whole night. And then we have Willard Wright. We have John Breeze. Or Breach. Breach. M.E. would be Maurice Evans. I guess that's another hint that it was Maurice Evans. And then O.B. Oscar Boynton played a game. Okay. And then A. Ash Blair joined in right at the end there. Okay. Now, does that mean that Ash Blair, since he was the last to join, is it possible that he went and did a murder and then came down to play some cards? 
Just deal the next one. Remember you as an agent for our trading company have to reflect its values to the fullest. Never be late. The client leaves the port on the 10th, which would be tomorrow. Be persuasive. Do not take no for an answer. We must get the client's product. So he must be the client's product. Might be the golden idol, right? Be effective. Once you have the product, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. Ah, is Robert Red... Redford? Red... What's his name? Redruth. Robert Redruth, is he the servant boy? Most importantly, no matter what you do, be mindful of our reputation. Our names must remain spotless. So, given he's carrying a dagger, and he has this little missive statement saying, yeah, yeah, this makes way more sense. He's the one that killed William. He was the last one to join in the game of cards. Because he shows up at the end here. William go... Oh, Willard, sorry. Willard goes upstairs, gets stabbed while they're playing this game of cards, and then Ash comes downstairs and plays again. Now, he had a key. The door does not open is interesting. But maybe Ash had a key to his own trap door. To his own room here. And he went up through the trap door, came over, stabbed this guy, broke the window just to make it look like something else happened. I'm not sure about that part. And then... Why did that bugger give me a note when he knows damn well I can't read? Gave him a note saying you can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman's place down at the docks. Alright, this is all making a lot more sense. So, it was actually Ash. Where's Ash? Ash Blair. Crept into Willard Wright's room through the trap door. And then these guys were playing cards. And it wouldn't have been Ash Blair that was playing cards because he was upstairs stabbing someone. A fight ensued upstairs and Willard Wright got stabbed with a dagger and we need to determine who was playing at the time that was me maurice evans because he hadn't started playing music yet two or fewer slots are incorrect okay we're pretty close all right let's go back down and look at the timeline on the score sheet jb o oh ob sorry oscar baden was playing oh yeah maurice evans played earlier Maurice Evans started playing music, that's why they didn't hear the stabbing happening. So, sorry, Oscar Baden was the one down here. There you go. Okay. No, uh, the scroll has been fulfilled. A man going by the name of Ash Blair crept into Willard's room through the trapdoor to steal something important. But when he opened the music box, it woke Willard up and a fight ensued. That makes sense. In the fracas, Ash stabbed Willard and attempted to frame an escaped convict. Ah... Okay. That was good. That was good. So, there's a frightening looking mermaid. The intoxication... The intoxicating dinner party. We have ourselves a child? Oh, that's a small woman. These sure are fine coats. Little Pip. No, this is a kid. Named Little Pip. Little Pip. Run to the city and grab me some Ash Blair tobacco and a bottle of gin. Oh, yeah. That's right. In... In uh, the third part of yesterday's chapter, the guy had Ash Blair tobacco. Makes sense. That's why he's going by the name Ash Blair now. I will pay you when I am back, says David. Sure, we'll need to know who David is. These sure are fine coats, and he has a knife on him. Oh, an expensive cigar. All right, we can go upstairs, but first let's look at these nice coats. An overcoat and a hat. Overcoat and a hat. Ah, oh, a box of cigars. So maybe Little Pip has taken a cigar from that box. Dear Miss Richards, I enjoyed your company tremendously when I visited your father last month. I am certain that you would wish to hear the rest of my thoughts on the shortcomings of our society. I invite you and your father to my dinner to a dinner on April 8th at my manor. Sincerely, Edmund Cloudsley. Edmund Cloudsley. So that is... That's the politician, right? That makes sense why he's talking about the shortcomings of our society. Dear Mary, here is something for your diary from me. For you, I would fight a tiger and win, says Peter Batley, 19, or 1788, March 5th, Peter Batley. And that is the one who has the stables there. Okay. And then the statue... Oh, there's a... What is this? A syringe with some liquid left in it. And somebody has hidden it in the statue. It's a good hiding spot. Uh, if we go over here... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. This is going to get pretty extensive. Holy cow, there's a lot of people going on. So, a lot of stuff going on. So, this is uh, Rose... What's her name? Rose... 
Start with a C, I think. And unfortunately, she's not in good health. The lady is not breathing and her face is blotched. I'm going to guess she was stabbed with a syringe. And she has some stuff on her rings with various gemstones, the fan that she had earlier, and four pounds. Okay. On the table here, we have a lot of different food places. A salad untouched. A full glass of cloudy liquid untouched. A partially empty glass of yellow liquid. A partially empty glass of red liquid. Partially empty glass of red liquid. Partially empty glass of red liquid. Partially empty glass of cloudy liquid. Partially empty glass of clear liquid. Okay. So it's possible that she was poisoned by the meal, the different various drinks. It might be a combination thing, right? Yeah, everybody's got a different combination of drinks. It could be when you drank the red and the and the gray or the cloudy net together, then you were poisoned. A partially eaten piece of roast. Partially eating a salad. Smoked cigar. Okay, amber liquid. I think we'll return to the food stuff when we have a little more information on who is eating what. This is horrible, says this person, who doesn't seem terribly distraught. An embroidered handkerchief. All right. This is Edmund. It's poison. Nobody touch a thing and nobody move. I'll send for a doctor right away. An embroidered handkerchief again. And a key with a heart shape. And then a key with a square shape. Okay. She does seem rather unwell. It's extremely upset. Upsetting is the word. And this is Peter Batley. You killed my aunt, you devil. I should execute you on the spot, says to the butler, I'm guessing. Oh my lord, this has nothing to do with me. Now, what does he have on him? Note to self, if you get frustrated when working, remember the tale about the rich lord who married his donkey and you will feel better. Okay. <laughs> Ensure that the beautiful lady sits next to me during dinner and I will slip you a shilling, says Peter. Okay, so I'm guessing by the beautiful lady, he's not referring to his aunt. He's probably referring to this lady here. And he's willing to bribe the butler to sit the beautiful woman beside him during dinner. Okay. Small, simple key. So let's go over to this other room here. Quite a bit going on. Remember to take the fourth one from every row. Okay. Raulo Cthulhu, star child. A stack of candles, some money, and an ink pot. And then in here, we have, I will not change the rule that the staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. Do not bother me with such nonsense again. Okay, so presumably this is Edmund's household because he's assigned EC. M. Mademoiselle, the laceless count, the besmirched lover of Lusitania. Four shillings and a penny and a knife. Hang on, so if we, uh, oh my goodness. All right, there's more to read here. Dear Edmund, this cannot continue. Since my return and move to Sebastian's Manor, he has asked for financial support seven times. He clearly is unable to take any monetary responsibility. Please, I need your help, my dear brother. Sincerely, Rose Cubert. Since my return and move to Sebastian's Manor, he has asked. Now, who was it that was, it was Peter that was not doing well financially, right? Hmm. Okay. Dear Edmund, I like your idea. Let's send him to the colonies where his violent nature will make him feel at home. I hear you are having dinner with Lady Mary and her well-to-do father, Lothar. Okay, so Mary and Lothar. Got it. If Peter and I were to join you, we would we could beguile him with tales of adventures in the colonies so we can ship him away. Ah, uh, I see, I see. That's, uh, I see. So th that's what Peter's doing here. He's got a pack of cards. I didn't notice this before. A pack of cards and a fork. Huh. So Rose and Peter have come along together. Peter's trying... I guess he's relying on Rose for financial help. Edmund is hosting this party because he wanted to regale this gentleman and his daughter of the shortcomings of society. And... Oh, there's a safe here. I guess we can start filling in some of the names, at least. We, we already know Edmund. Edmund Cloudsley. Hold on. Oh yeah, there he is. Peter Batsley, we know him. Batley. A cabinet? Oh, we have to fill out who room each... Who has each room? Okay. This is Little Pip. Uh, the older man... So, this is Mary. This is Rose Cubert. And the butler, we don't actually know who the, what the butler's name is. P. 
Peter slipped him the note. Note to self. But yeah, we don't have anything about his name on here. He doesn't have anything. Is poison nobody new move? It's horrible. Okay, let's go check the coats again because there was a hint in one of these, right? So a box of cigars, that might be useful to us. But, okay, so. Dear Mary, here's something for your diary for me. Peter Batley is very immature. Very immature. He's the one who slipped this to Mary. Dear Miss Richards, okay. So it's Mary Richards. Did I already get that? There you go. Miss Richards. And the father, of course, is... I, I assume he's also got the last name of Richards. Overcat coat and a hat. Fur coat and a hat. So we don't know anything about his last name just yet. Under the bed? What is this? Down with parasites. Too long have they feasted on our blood and sweat. Okay. Some rebellious document. A sealed pot labeled print paint. Okay. On the wall. Mrs. Smith. Two eggs and a pot of tea each breakfast. No heavy food for dinner. You are responsible for little Pip doing all his errands. Mr. Walker. I am to be woken up and dressed at 7 a.m. I expect to receive my daily newspaper by noon. Mrs. Baker. I expect all my rooms to be cleaned every day. Twice on the day I... Twice on the days I have visitors. And NB. David Gorn's job requires that he may arrive or leave during the night. No complaining about this. David Gorn's job. So he's still around. David Gorn. Yeah. Hmm. So is Edmund the one that got David Gorn to murder Willem? Willard? A couple of pennies. Oh, a shiny pocket watch. There are a lot of keys going around. Monkey Man 2, tooth for tooth. And Monkey Man 1 versus Striped Dark Hand. Oh, we can pick on, we can click on these, so I guess we'll take them for now. A small bottle filled with amber liquid. And then various keys of different shapes, but somewhat similar. Ooh. Thank you, dear. No, I threw it out. I do not read such dirty liter literature anymore. I do hope our master's guests are satisfied and that Brian served everything as instructed. Okay, so we have a first name. So Brian... Brian is the, uh, is the butler. And on the wall here, it said Mr. Walker. So Brian Walker, I assume. I'm going to fill that in. Ryan Walker is the butler. Where's Walker here? Okay. And she is either Mrs. Baker or Mrs. Smith. NB. Do we know who NB is? There's no NB just yet. We're missing a portrait. Okay. Of course I can give you some candles for your room, Lucia. Lucia. I assume you're itching to continue reading that scandalous novel. So she says she's not interested in reading those novels anymore. This isn't a novel, is it? Down with Parasites? Too long of the piece on it. Maybe that is a novel. I don't know, it looks like scrolls to me. Maybe there's a different one. Oh, Ash Blair, there we go. I think we found out where that guy's residing. He's got a pistol. David, clean up the barn until Wednesday. I plan to continue experimenting with the artifact. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Edward is into some uh, bad stuff, which means... Hold on. Oh, okay. So this is... Where's David here? David's room. David Gorn. So we know that just because it's got his stuff. And then if we go up, we have to figure out these ones. We know that things are not necessarily organized according to their term of residence. Here. I will not change the rule that staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. Do not bother me with such nonsense again. Oh, there is a novel here. Miss Mademoiselle, the Laceless Count, the Besmirched Lover of Lusitania. So is it fair to say that this is Lucia's room? Because it has the novel in it? Oh, this has novel as well. Rallo Cthulhu, Star Child. Ah. I guess we don't know which one is which. Oh, what's this stuff? A pair of twig dolls and a bottle of pink liquid. Partially empty. Oh, we may have a murderer. Once your target has ingested the love potion... Oh, no. <laughs> Establish eye contact and hold it for as long as possible. In most cases, the effects will be felt within two days, depending on your own appearances. Alright, that's funny. So, it's probably not the murderer. Uh, that, that's probably what the syringe is all about. Or ingested, right? 
What did it say? Ingested? Ingested. So through food. Not through syringe. Two sealed bottles of cloudy liquid labeled peptic tonic. Okay. Due to the sensitivity of your stomach, I advise abstaining from alcohol for the next month. Also consider a glass of peptic tonic before eating to avoid upsetting your digestive system. Okay. A sealed bottle labeled opium. Ah. Is that normally allowed? In here we have a golden idol and a sack of money, I guess. Who knows? Dear Edmund, this cannot continue. Oh yeah, we, we did read this. So that's Rose talking about Peter Batley. Mrs. Baker started... Oh, Mrs. Baker's starting date, 1787, August 1st. Position mouse, housemaid. Yearly wage, nine pounds. So we have a starting date for one person, Mrs. Baker. And this has the note about not changing the rules. So we have to assume that this is going to be the room of the person with the longest tenure. And... Oh, there's a few things here. Well, well, Edmund, you seem pretty pleased after the old boy passed away and a spot freed up for you in the House of Lords. Take care of those with whom you ally. I have many friends and will deal with you swiftly if you dare cross me. Lord George Bridges. Interesting. Edmund Clousley, once more you have failed to answer our requisition. This is the last warning you will receive. Your transgression against us demands amends. The only course of action you have is to surrender yourself to our justice. Last chance for repentance, serpent, or we will unleash one of our stewards upon you. Brotherhood of Masks. Dear uncle, I hear you are interested in Lady Richards. I think you are too old for her. I shall court her instead. Pa secondly, please lend me 300 pounds. It is small change to you and I am desperately in need of it at present. Truly yours, dear Peter Bally. What a way of asking. Uh, the revolution will come to the, for the likes of you, you crooked bastard. Soon you will pay for your sins against honest common folk with your blood. Final vanguard. Holy cow, there's a lot of different factions going on. Uh, Platonello? Platonello? Ideal Republic. Visions of a utopia with order and structure. And then Dr. Abrams, Anderton, Secret Codes. Such trivial ciphers as reading only the first word of every line are easy to produce on short notice, but extremely unsafe and easy to decode. Consider this simple example. Money is denominator of value. Has evolved and changed a lot still in savvy hands. It is a powerful tool. Money has changed hands. Okay. Hmm. So we need to watch out for secret codes in the messages. You after and the take you and swiftly. That doesn't quite work. Once our warning, your amends the to last. I think we have to take these at face value for what they're saying. I Richards for instead. That doesn't work. The for you soon. Your common blood. Nope. Hmm. What's with the door? The door is locked. The door is locked. I don't know if that's relevant at all. The door is locked. The door is locked. They're all locked, which one would expect. Oh, up here we have some more. Oh yeah, no, this is Monkey Man. Monkey Man two tooth for tooth. So whose room is this then? This is some stuff that's just been stored away. This isn't a person's room? I mean, that looks like a bed though. Oh, this is Little Pip's room. Oh, Little Pip has the pocket watch. Little Pip reads Monkey Man books. Okay. Hmm. All right. So if this is Lucia, we can fill that out because the other lady was saying that. I can give you some candles for your room, Lucia. I assume you are itching to continue reading that scandalous novel. So can we assume that Lucia doesn't have candles in her room? This room has candles. This room does not have candles, but we also know that that's David Goren's room. This room does not have candles. This room does have candles. Okay, I think we're safe to say that this is Lucia's room. She has a love potion. Yeah, she has a love potion. She has a scandalous novel named The Laceless Count. Ooh. So, Lucia, I'm going to put her down as having this room here. She's also the one who's been around the longest? That doesn't seem likely, but... Maybe. I do hope our master's guests are satisfied. Brian, the dinner party will take place on April 8th. Everything should be ready before noon. Prepare roasted boar. Uh, apparently that's an important word. Young Mr. R Miss Richards appears not to enjoy meat, therefore prepare some alternative side dishes. Oh, okay, hang on. Do we need to say where everybody's sitting? We do, around the table. Let's go upstairs. So she's going to have no meat. I see just vegetables and vegetables. 
Parsley smoked a cigar. I'm guessing she's not a sm cigar smoking person. A salad untouched, a parsley eaten salad, and a parsley eaten salad. Um. Okay. I would. But they said to have some side dish for her, right? I mean, most of the table wasn't eating meat, so... I guess you could say, actually, that this person may have just eaten only meat. So the tonic, full glass of cloudy liquid. So there's two seats with the tonic. One of them is going to be for Edmund. I'm kind of making the assumption here, I don't know, but I have a feeling what actually happened is that they, you know, Peter, or Edmund has all these threats in the trash bin here. They're threatening to bring justice down upon him. I think somebody tried to poison his food, and he actually swapped spots with someone else. There's two things of tonic. He probably sat down at the wrong one. Nah. Partially eaten salad and a partially eaten piece of roast. Partially eaten piece of roast, partially eaten salad. This is untouched. Why would this be untouched? Partially empty glass of clear liquid. Hmm. An opaque bottle labeled water. That's suspicious. Who keeps water around? A salad bowl. A half full carafe of amber liquid labeled brandy. A half full bottle of red li liquid labeled wine. Almost full carafe of yellow liquid containing lemons. And a half empty bottle of cloudy liquid labeled peptic tonic. Okay. So there is a clear liquid, right? What's up with that? Partially empty glass of clear liquid. Would that be water? It's probably water. I think that's a safe bet. So we don't know what people's drinking preferences were other than Edmund wanting the tonic. So he's at one of those two spots. What was this? Amber liquid. That would be the brandy. Hmm. And yellow liquid would be the would be the lemon, lemon juice, lemon. I think this must have been the seating spot for Mary. I'm gonna put that in just as a maybe. We'll put the first name only. Where is Mary on here? Getting a little messy. Mary. Uh, yellow drink would be Mary, and I'll just leave it like that. And then, are we going to assume that the butler did put Peter beside Mary? If so, then this would be Peter's spot. Peter wanting brandy would make sense, wouldn't it? Now, the cigars at the table were a clue as well. We have cigars in this coat pocket. That's not a very fancy looking coat or hat though, right? Look at these other hats. This must be roses. Oh, that's Mary's. Sorry. That's Mary's. Overcoat in the hat, overcoat in the hat. Because if this isn't a very fancy looking coat, then I would assume that's Peter, because he's the one who's down on his fortune. Um, but then what's he doing with a box of cigars? Yeah, I don't know about that. Why does this kid have an expensive cigar on him? Okay. Print paint. Oh. The door to the outside is not locked. Okay, oh, look at this. Oh, in the pantry. Three loaves of bread, some lemons, a sack of flour, a pair of opaque bottles labeled water, a basket of potatoes, cut vegetables, and a big piece of meat. Now, does she have, she had this stuff. Dear Ada, oh, found her name. I have to use this letter to show, to share some good news. There is no substance to the claims that your late husband used his position to squander church money. The judge has decided to remove all accusations and you will be no longer a target of baseless gossip. 
I truly and sincerely hope this will provide some comfort in these dark times when ignorance and impudence are, go hand in hand. May our Lord stewards over our poor souls. March 4th, 1788. This is Ada. She just lost her husband, unfortunately. Don't put Ada there. And... Ink pot. The Wise Slave. Fables about rulers that make you think. Dear Diary, this has been an ordinary day mostly spent in preparation for tomorrow's dinner event. I do believe the time has come for me to ask for a raise in salary after all these years I have loyally worked here. It is a difficult talk conversation to be had, but I will strengthen my will and talk to Master about it tomorrow. Keeping a diary seems... Uh, and this might be wrong, but it seems like something one of the women would do. So... I feel like saying this is Ada's room downstairs. Uh, and upstairs, is this likely to be the butler's room? Rallo Cthulhu Star Child. Remember to take the fourth one from every row? What is that referring to? From every row? Hmm. Some money and some ink and not much else. This seems like the crappy room, to be honest. Oh, hold on, there's something out here. Some keys. Why are there so many keys? Okay, what was that doing out there? It was hung outside. Hmm. That's interesting. In here we have a full and sealed bottle with amber liquid labeled brandy. And in full and sealed bottles with red liquid labeled wine. Okay, so that's where they keep the, the alcohol. Roasted boar. The thing is, I don't really see any reason to know about these shapes of keys. I think this is the love serum. A syringe with some liquid left in it. No, oh, no, okay. again, it said to be ingested, so never mind. Hmm. Yeah, what are we missing here? First name, Richards. Okay. I'm certain that you would wish to hear the rest of my thoughts on the shortcomings of society. April 3rd. Dear Miss Richards. Mary Richards. Hmm. Do we have the Richards Sr.'s name? Doesn't have anything of relevance. Ensure that the beautiful lady sits next to me during dinner and I will slip you a shilling. So, okay, this is kind of interesting. The butler has this. Note to self, if you get frustrated when working, remember the tale about the rich lord who married his donkey and you will feel better. So he does seem to have a thing against the, uh, the upper class. And there's a lot of stuff about anti-upper class here. Down with the parasites. And then in the cupboard here we have... Um, Having worked here for a long time and asking for a raise after all these years. The wise slave. Fables about rulers that make you think. Definitely seems as if this would be the butler's room. The only part that kind of throws me off is this diary, but... I will strengthen my will and talk to Master about it tomorrow. But, if he's been around the longest, then why do we have this note? about the staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I misunderstood. This is saying that, that the current rule is that the staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. I was thinking this meant they were petitioning to have that be the rule. Okay, no, that makes way more sense. So it must be... All right, take Ada out of here. She goes up here and... What's his name? 
I cannot find him. Brian. Brian here. Okay. Brian Walker. Brian Walker must be downstairs. He's been around the longest. He's the one who has uh, a thing against the master's print paint. I wonder if that's relevant. Was she poisoned with print paint? I don't know what that is. Is it just regular paint? Hmm. Door to the outside is not locked. There's... Oh, to Mrs. Smith for three years of service. Hmm. I guess we need to figure out which one is Smith. Ada Smith? Ada Smith or Lucia Smith? Also, I should probably put Ada. Wait a second. Ah. Here's Ada. Here we go. Ada. There you go. Ada Smith or Lucia Smith? Did we have any clues in here? A knife. Take the fourth one from every row. Hmm. Secret codes. Ideal Republic. Visions of a Utopia with order and structure. Yeah. Then we have the Peptic Tonic in here. Opium. Yeah, Edward is into a lot of bad stuff. Was there anything else on here? Final Vanguard. Peter, <laughs> Peter Batley's sad, demeaning uh, letter. Lord George Bridges. Brotherhood of Masks. Whatever stewards upon you. Interesting. Uh, this guy's a steward, right? Is that just to give us the word steward? Possibly. Somebody wanted somebody dead, and thus somebody poisoned the something, and hid the necessary key. Oh, that's why we need keys. Okay. In a... Don't know. In a bag. Probably in a bag. At the dinner party, somebody ingested the poison dye. We know it was Rose. Rose ingested the poison. Where is she? I can't f do stuff alphabetically. Rose... What's your last name? Rose Cubert. Ingested the poison and died. And I'm assuming it was Edmund Cloudsley that was supposed to die. Uh... Edmund, they wanted Edmund Clausley dead, so they poisoned the tonic and hid the necessary key. We don't know where. You know what? Actually, that's what the necessary key is about. Hang on, just quickly, let's look at the table. A partially empty glass and a full glass. So therefore, this must have been Edmund sitting here and Rose sitting here. That makes a lot of sense. So let's go back here. We now know that where's Rose on here? So Rose was sitting at the partially drunk. Here we go. Rose was sitting here and Edmund sat there. We can fill in the last names as well, of course. Mary Richard, except we don't know for sure that that's Mary Richard's spot. We're only going with that because of the lemon juice. I think that's a fair bet. Mary has a lemon juice. Peter was sitting beside her, and then her father was sitting across the table with the expensive cigars. I don't know why the guy with the expensive cigars has the cheap-looking hat, but that seems to be what the situation is, so we'll just go with that. Mary Richards, Peter... Peter Batley? Okay, we don't know the old man's name. I see the old man as in, like, the father, not as in I'm demeaning his age. We'll go down here and look 
to get into this no no sorry no the tonic the tonic was kept in here to get into this we needed a blue key is that what this is telling us there's keys of all these sorts of different colors we check this i don't know if that's the necessary key though Is it one of these keys? Why are there so many keys that look the same? To Mrs. Smith, oh hey, yeah, this I guess this is probably a good hint for who's who. Mrs. Smith, two eggs and a pot of tea for breakfast, each breakfast, no heavy food for dinner. You're responsible for little Pip doing all of his errands. Mr. Walker, Mrs. Baker, and NB. David Gorin's job requires that he... Oh. Uh... Yeah, NB. Do we know... Who the heck is NB? Hmm. Okay. Mrs. Baker, I expected all my rooms to be cleaned every day, twice on the days I have visitors. Okay, so given we have the cook and the cleaner, I think we're pretty safe to say that this lady is Smith and this lady is Baker. All right, Baker, Baker under Ada, Ada Baker, and Smith under Lucia. Now we don't have a name for this guy. Lothar. George? Okay, hold on. We have names here that I don't recognize. Hmm. Hang on, so Lucia Smith, let's fill out the other side over here. So Lucia Smith and Ada Baker here. And the cabinet would be Little Pip. Where's Pip? Oh yeah, we got the names correct. Thank goodness. We have narrowed things down somewhat. Now these names up here, we just need his first name. Is it George? Where did we find that name? I don't think there's anything to do with names up here. And these are the different drinks. An partially smoked cigar. He's rather unwell. This is horrible. He has the blue key. If he has the blue key... Oh, the shape of the key. Ah, okay, hold on. So this, this key here has a notch and then kind of like a tooth tooth down here. Okay. So if we look in the bag outside, I suspect it's hiding the bag. This is it right there. That's the key. It's hiding in a bag. If we check through here, the other keys, that's not a, interesting. That doesn't match. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of red herring keys. The one we care about is the one in the bag. Let's put that down here. Hit the necessary key in a bag. And... If that's the case, I think we can assume, since this bag is tied up out the window here, whoever's in this room was the person that was trying to kill Edward. And I have assumed that Ada Baker is the one who's out there. Why would Ed Ada Baker want Edward dead? There is no substance to the claims that your late husband used his position to squander church money. May our Lord steward over our poor souls. Interesting. So why... I'm not sure how her husband being dead here and being accused is related, unless Edward was the one accusing her husband. Which is possible. I don't know how the cipher thing comes into play. But given how outspoken Edward is about his beliefs here, It may be that he was talking about her husband in a um, a slanderous way, and she didn't like that. And so she tried to have him poisoned, which is not the way to handle those sorts of things, by the way. I think we'll put down Ada Baker. 
as the potential killer. Ada Baker. Wanted Edmund Clausley dead, and thus Ada Baker poisoned the tonic. Oh no, somebody else? Wait a second, is somebody else? Well, Ada Baker is the one that poisoned the tonic and hid the necessary key in a bag. And at the dinner table, Rose Kubert and Jess the poison died. Did somebody else want him dead? I'm going to put her name in again. I, I don't know, that seems a little weird that they ask for her name. Yeah, two or three slots are incorrect. Somebody else wanted him dead, so Ada Baker poisoned the tonic? I, I, I'm pretty confident in saying that Ada Baker's the one that hid the key in the bag. So... Yeah. But we filled these in correctly. We know that this is where they are. So it must be... Hmm. His name is missing from these two. We just haven't found any clues as... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The butler wanted him dead. Brian Walker wanted him dead. Brian Walker must have asked for a raise and been denied. No. <laughs> Alright, never mind. Ridges. See, the problem is, because I went around clicking on things, I don't know where I got some of these names, so I don't know where to go back to find them. What's with this, too? Once your target has ingested the love potion, establish eye contact and hold it for as long as possible. In most cases, the effects will be felt within two days, depending on your own appearances. Why? It's partially empty. Who was she trying to get to fall in love with her? David, clean up the barn until Wednesday. I plan to continue experimenting with the artifact. Yeah. Confused about who NB is. These are where things are being kept. Mrs. Smith for three years of service. So she's been around for three years. And there's this thing talking about... Um... Yearly wage. Started, starting date was August 1st for Mrs. Baker. Hold on. Yeah, Ada Baker. What year are we? I've actually forgotten. 1788. So February 10th, 1788. This is about two months ago. One or two months ago. 1787. So Mrs. Baker only started a year ago. Huh. What was the date on these letters? 1788. George Bridges. That's where we got the name George Bridges. And then the Brotherhood of Masks sent a thing. So 1788 for both of these. And she only started working here in 1787, but that would have been before the threats. So it's not like she started working here, like she was sent here to do the murder. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be the case. This may our Lord steward over our poor souls. I there used has no eye comfort. Okay, hold on. There must this must be a cipher thing. That's what we're looking for. Uh judge. What are we looking to, for? Is there anything in a room that would give a hint? Star child. Remember to take the fourth one from every row. That's what it is. <laughs> nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. The fourth one from every row. So I have to use this. There is no substance. This substance... Okay, this substance to remove target. Sincerely, Dark Hand Steward. Oh, Sincerely, Dark Hand Steward. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like it. So Dark Hand Steward wanted Admin Clausley dead. Bing! Scrolls... What? Scroll's not been fulfilled. 
Well, the other ones are missing. So the scroll has been fulfilled. Ada Baker received encoded instructions from Darkhand Steward to poison Edmund Cloudsley. She used her ability to move freely throughout the rooms while cleaning and made a copy of the key to the medicine cabinet. She used a syringe to poison the sealed peptic tonic battle. However, during the party, Rose asked for tonic and drank it first and died from the poison. Dang. Uh, I do still want to fill in this person's name. Who the heck is this guy? He's not George. He's not George Burgess. We know that. I don't know where Lothar comes from. Okay, so his name is Lothar. I don't know where we got that name, but apparently it's the right one. So that's all we were missing. I, I don't want to take too long looking for it, but I would like to know where that name came from. Lothar. That's weird. It must have been in a letter, right? Oh, there you go. Her well-to-do father, Lothar. Oh, I'm so dumb. Okay, all right, there you go. It was in the letter, we're good. So, good, we solved that one. Dark Hand Steward wanted Edmund Cloudsley dead. That was good. Cypher came into it. I like that. Um. Okay. So, the cursed inheritance, the explosive events in the forest cabin. Alright, we have ourselves a bag with a diary. Henchman for hire in Timberbrook region. Billy Cracker. Oakwood gang brawler robber. Hardy Ape. There, let's get these names in it. Billy Cracker, Hardy Abe, Burkham Workhouse Brawler, has a cart. Lilo, Billy, Hobbs Gang, Burglar, enters through chimneys, and Jack Nails, Timberbrook in Burglar, Picklock. A box of confectionery, and some hats. Are these hats related to the these names? There are only four names in here, but there's, a pic, there's six pictures of hats. Maybe related, I don't know. Let's go into the house. What is going on here? So here's a burglar, and he's got a hat on. There's little Pip hiding under the table. Go, coin, go! Is this coin? Err. Oh, what is going on here? Somebody died, apparently. Uh, what? Okay. So the, this guy's drapes over this. I click on it, it shows me him. The man is breathing, but appears to have lost consciousness. Okay. But he's not quite dead yet. I do not care what means you use to acquire what I need, but remember to be discreet as always. Note that I do not want it to be too decayed. Or I do not want it too decayed. The more recently it has died, the better. Ah, uh, that's a little dark. One of the old workhouse geezers croaked yesterday. I will arrange for a cart to move the corpse if you send me directions. And be quick, before they bury him, I do not want to dig that stiff. Hmm. The old workhouse geezers, they say. A loaded pistol with a key and some money. A scarecrow in a wooden coffin. Okay. So the idea here is that he was replacing the body that was in the coffin. He got knocked out by this guy. Ah! He says. He's got a ring. He has some confectionery. He has a loaded pistol and a sword. Let's... Oh, on the wall here. Everyone, you are not to visit any village or city without my permission. At no point may you disclose your location to the cabin. Mr. David Gorin, you are in charge of all security arms. Mrs. Lucia Smith, you will taste any food you cook before it is presented to me. Little Pip, so this is in response to the poisoning, I guess. Little Pip, you are in charge of Black Bestia and Golden Doubloon. Black Bestia and Golden Doubloon. This must be Golden Doubloon. Both must be fed daily. Edmund Cloudsley. Now, Golden Doubloon. Hang on, let's start filling some things in before I move on. Golden doubloon. Little Pip. We know that. Where's Little Pip here? Little and Pip. The guy drapes over the coffin is David Goran. Oh wow. Got quite a bit to fill out on the left side. Um, Let's go back here. So this thing, actually hold on quick. His hat has a flower on it. It's like a purple top hat with a flower. And this thing 
that would be the bottom left. I don't know how to determine what's going on there, but he has a box. He has a piece of confectionery from the box. Timberbrook in burglar picklock. Hobbs gang burglar enters through chimneys. Oakwood gang brawler robber. Burkham workhouse brawler has a cart. Burkham workhouse. Workhouse. I see. Um, little Billy. So we don't know how to determine the uh, or how to relate the hats to the names yet. Let's leave it like that for now. Oh, also, sir, what the heck is going on here? What in the world? Okay, there's something weird going on with his back. He has a club. This guy. Oh, is that his hat? That's his hat, I guess. This guy has a tattoo on his hand. And I finally have the location of my target. Meet us on November 10th, Friday in the Timberbrook region in and bring all your tools. You get your share as we agreed. WK. Oh, a set of block picks, a saw and a loaded pistol. Okay, so here's the golden idol. A small weight is tied to the pull down lever at the back of the idol. Ah, nice. But it's defending itself. Somebody somebody goes to get it, then the weight is released and triggers the spell. We have a gold rotten apple and a green apple. Okay. Right next to each other on the shelf, huh? Oh. What? Oh my goodness. Alright. Vacuum. This simply did not work. After I aimed at the sealed vessel and activated the idol, both air and vessel disappeared. Upon further consideration, it was an obvious mistake. Vacuum version 2. Attempted with this input and it was a definite improvement. It decreased the amount of air, but curiously still did not create a complete vacuum in the sealed vessel. Okay. Cool stuff. Gold filtering. The target must contain some gold for this to work. Seawater is a suitable target, for example. However, a great deal of seawater would be required for this to yield any significant amount. Oh, I see. Perhaps I should try it on a ship in an open sea. First step, get gold by aiming at the target. Second step, aim at the, uh, an empty vessel to retrieve it. Wow, this thing is strong. Powerful. If the implications of this are what I surmise, unknown effect 14. This could be a tremendous discovery. The next step is to progress from fruit to more advanced organic matter. Oh, I must ask David to fetch me a dead body for further experience. This is vitally urgent. No way. So he turned a rotten apple into a good fresh apple. Wow, he like reverse time on it. It's incredible. Cool. Spontaneous combustion. We've seen this one. You cannot combust the target if you have not performed the freezing beforehand. Ooh, that's cool. Interesting. The speed at which heat is increased appears to be influenced by how strongly I press the trigger and how long I have performed this before it. Observation for freezing. Freezing the target rapidly can create curious side effects. For instance, I should be careful when freezing water in a sealed bottle. It exploded and the glass shards flew everywhere. Ah, we know why that happens due to physics. Safety notice upon pulling the trigger, if the glyph input is meaningful, the idol will perform the intended action on the target it can see. If its eye is red, it is ready for that input it and it will turn blue afterwards. If the eye is blue, you can only perform that input and it will turn red afterwards. Okay. When pulling the trigger, if the glyph input is meaningful, the idol will perform the intended action on the target you can see. Okay. Um, I want to have a look at the idol here. This input. So it's blue right now. So it was used while it was red. A shard of a vase. There's a chip on the door. Oh, it was broken open. All right. They just smashed the door open. This guy was hiding here and he was all ready. Is he smiling? I think he's smiling. Who is that, by the way? We don't know. There are empty slots. Oh. Shot, increased, decreased, club, stabbed, exploded. Oh, my goodness. So we get to determine what the idol itself does. Very cool. Ah. Ah, by the gods, what was that? So, hang on a little. Gentleman robber strikes in Westbrook. This must be the gentleman robber right here, except he's got a different hat on. The infamous gentleman robber Walter Keane, with a number of unnamed associates, held up a coach on the southern road leading out of Westbrook. The scoundrel robbed the passengers of all their valuables, kissed a young lady, and then left. This is already the fifth robbery by the infamous gentleman, who, as is his custom, appeared wearing an impeccable suit and a new hat in the latest city style. 
Oh, I see. Okay, so he wears all these different hats. The reward for catching Walter Keane has been increased to 100 pounds. Well, I, I think we have to assume. The guy in the fancy hat, who's dressed otherwise exactly like the picture, must be Walter Keane. Let's just fill that out. Walter Keane, this guy. Okay. Upon entering something, suddenly something, something. Okay, there's a lot to fill in over there. So, the idol... Okay, the idol exploded. I think it's fair to say that's what happened there. The vase. The vase exploded. Uh, exploded over here. The vase exploded and killed them both. We see that's what happened. We don't really know which two those are, though. According to this... Oh, none of these is Walter Keane. Hmm. Enters through chimneys, pick lock, has a cart. Well, they clearly they don't have the pick lock because they broke the lock, right? They broke the door open. Was there a lock on this door or was it just barred? I think it was just barred. So there was no lock to pick. Um. Hmm. This guy was trying to collect a corpse. And this is the same lady from last time. Um, Lucia, what was, what was her last name? Smith, right? Smith. Yeah. These two guys we don't know. This guy in the, in the chest here, that's a little strange too. Okay, so this guy has some bad teeth. This guy kind of also has bad teeth. He has a saw. Oh, hang on. A saw? A set of lockpicks and a loaded pistol. WK. So, given he... Oh, Walter Keane. Walter Keane. There you go. So, Walter Keane hired these guys. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. That's why he's not on the list. Walter Keane's not in here because he's the one doing the hiring. Walter Keane hired Jack Nails. Jack Nails has... The lockpicks. Hobbs gang burglar enters through chimneys. Oakwood gang. Burkham workhorse. Well, we know that the Burkham workhorse is here. Brawler has a cart, so... Right? This is the guy with the lockpicks? That's Jack Nails. Jack Nails is... Is that right? Yeah, Jack Nails up there. Uh, Jack and Nails. And then the other one was the brawler with the cart. What was his name? Hardy Abe. Okay, Hardy Abe right here. And when Hardy Abe and Jack Nails, now we don't know which order to put them in, but we'll just go like this. Enter the room, the vase exploded and killed them both. The amount of something in a sealed something. Uh, increased. The amount of air. Air or matter? I mean, they're both probably true, right? Okay, we'll leave that in. We'll leave that as it is for now. This guy in the corner did that. Needed a corpse. So we know that David Gorin needed a corpse. We can fill that in. Oh. Wait a second. David Gorin, along with accomplices, delivered a corpse. Delivered a scarecrow. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So David Gorin needed a corpse. Because Edward was requesting one. Or Ed Edmund Clausley was requesting one. I guess Edmund Clausley is the one that needs it, right? So we'll put that there, even though David Gordon also needs it because he was requested to get it. And so the gentleman guy, Walter Keane, along with accomplices, delivered a scarecrow. Do we have the word for that? Scarecrow? Delivered a coffin. I guess that's true. Delivered a coffin. He didn't have a corpse in there, though. Scarecrow in a wooden coffin. 
Upon entering... Suddenly... Entering. Something, suddenly, something, something. Suddenly... Oh, um... He didn't shoot him. Stabbed? Clubbed him. Clubbed him. And who has the club? Suddenly clubbed David Gorin. He's the one who's slumped over the coffin. And who has the club? This guy. This is the brawler. Makes perfect sense. Hardy Abe did. Where is Hardy Abe in our list of names? Where's the beginning? Uh, Hardy Abe suddenly clubbed him. Meanwhile, somebody whose name we don't know. Increase the amount of, I'm going to say air, because it doesn't look like there's any actual stuff in the vase. Oh, it could be water that's expanding too. Oh, they were talking about the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in here, it specifically mentioned freezing. Uh, for instance, I should be careful when freezing water in a sealed bottle. It exploded and the glass shards flew everywhere. So it's not that the mass... It wasn't increasing matter. Decreased heat. That's what it is. They decreased heat in a sealed vase. And the vase exploded. What is this guy's name? Black Bestia Golden Doubloon. So why did... It, hang on. Little Pip's job was to feed Black Bestia and Golden Doubloon. Have we seen... Oh, is Black Bestia in the room there? You're in charge of Black Bestia and Golden Doubloon. And I'm assuming this is Golden Doubloon. Golden Doubloon, right? Even though he is saying, Go coin go. Golden Doubloon. Yeah, it makes sense. Alright. Uh, you are in charge of all security and arms. Lucia Smith will taste the food. You're not to visit any village or city without my permission. At no point may you disclose the location of the cabin. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing that remains is figuring out this guy's name. Who is this? A loaded pistol. I don't see any clues as to his name. There's nobody missing from this. David Goran, Lucia Smith, and Little Pip are all here. Is this guy just the other th thief? Like, we had a third henchman, right? Little Billy, Jack Nails, Billy Cracker, and Hardy Abe. Nobody entered through the chimney, right? The chimney... This is on fire. I don't think anybody came down the chimney. But how did this guy get in here before the others? Even if he came down the chimney, he would have had to break the door open. Hold on. What's she saying? Ah, by the gods, what was that? As if she's suddenly surprised. Okay, going back out to this, we have Billy Cracker and Little Billy. I, I'm a... Uh, Little Billy, I mean, he's hiding in a chest. He looks kind of small, doesn't he? Oakwood gang brawler and robber. It's kind of a... It's, it's just a guess, though, right? You don't have to be that small to be hiding in a chest like that. I I just following the evidence, I really don't think he would come down this chimney and not been noticed. <laughs> it would be kind of hard to avoid yelping as you're coming down a very hot and smoky chimney. So Billy Cracker. We're gonna put Billy Cracker into this. No. All right, let's try little Billy. No. Oh. Okay, okay. What else do we have? Walter's Keen, Hardy Abe, Jack Nails. Those all seem correct to me. 
Little Pip, Lucia Smith, and David Gore, and we've seen them before. Golden Bloon, I think, is a very fair bet, considering Little Pip is saying, get him coin. Uh... Hmm. What am I missing when it comes to this guy's name? A shard of a vase. Pause. Oh yeah, I guess that's something, is we could follow these. Okay, what were the instructions for this? So if we go looking at this, because we do have to solve the right side of the thing too. Freezing, observation, so that, oh no, it couldn't be freezing because these don't, these symbols don't match. We had, if I go back to the vase, or not the vase, the idol, we have the hook, and then two squares, and then blank. And it's showing blue right now. Vacuum. Ah. Oh no, but that's a hook with a dot on it. Um, if his eye is red, it is ready for that input, and it will turn blue afterwards. If the eye is blue, you can only perform that input, and it will turn red afterwards. Now, freezing requ uh, spontaneous combustion. Hmm. The only thing that really matches, though, is the vacuum. Because we have that, and then the two squares, and then blank. It decreased the amount of air, but curiously still did not create a complete vacuum in the sealed vessel. But if it was an implosion, I don't think we'd have this happening. So this and this, there are empty slots. So increase and decrease. Actually, let's go look at the... Over here. So vacuum, that is decrease. Decrease and decrease. Uh, both air and vessel disappeared. <laughs> it was an, <laughs> it simply did not work. After, upon further consideration, it was an obvious mistake. So is this decrease air? That's what that's saying? And then increase air. Ah, uh, because the opposite would be increase, right? So gold filtering, I'm not going to worry about that one right now. Unknown effect, this would be increase. Um, matter? I don't know. Freezing and spontaneous combustion. So decrease matter? Air. Hold on. This one was... That one was air. This one is matter, it seems. Both the air and the vessel disappeared. Freezing spontaneous combustion. Decrease and increase. Okay, well, let's, let's start filling this out. But what I think I know. So this is increase. And this is decrease. And then this is matter... This is air. Um, what would this be? Water. Freezing is water. Or temperature, temperature, heat. So decrease matter, heat. Increase matter, heat. Okay, cool. This is really cool. And then we also have life? Uh, not that one. This one here, gold. Decrease gold. So get gold by aiming at the target, and then increase gold by aiming at the target. Okay, that one's pretty easy. Oh. Can I click on it? There you go. All right, so we got that. We are now masters of the golden idol. And all we're really missing is this guy's name. I think I've got most of the other stuff correct. Decrease the amount of heat in a sealed vase, but that's not what it looks like he did. So now going off of what we know, this is increase air. 
So he increased. Pretty, oh, they moved it over here. Increased the amount of air in a sealed vase. The vase exploded and killed them both. Yeah, I guess something freezing a lot. Yeah, sure, it'll crack the vessel, but it's not going to make it explode. Hmm. Also, happened extremely rapidly. But, okay. So, now it's just this guy's name. That's all we're missing here, I think. I'm pretty sure I've got everything else filled in. Who the heck is this? It wasn't Billy Cracker. Unless I have somebody else's name wrong. Hardy Abe and Jack Niels. But Jack Niels has the lockpicks. So he must be the, the lockpick. WK, Walter Keen. I finally have the location of my target. Meet us on November 10th, Friday in the Timberbrook Inn and bring all your tools. You'd get your share as we agreed. This is the brawler. Hmm. This is just some other guy. Wait, is this Edmund? Oh my goodness, is this Edmund who's hiding in here? I didn't recognize him because he's not wearing his glasses and stuff. Hang on. Oh my goodness, that was Edmund Clausley all along. What are you doing in there? Okay, so Edmund Clausley. There you go, the school has been filled in. To gain entrance to Edmund Clausley's secret forest cabin, gentleman Robert Walter Keane pretended to deliver a corpse to Edmund for his experiments. On entering the cabin, the robbers ambushed the servants and Edmund locked himself in his study. While the robbers were sawing through the lock, Edmund prepared a trap with the idol that killed two of the intruders. Alright, but what happened to Walter? That was pretty cool though. Smart thinking there, Edmund. That, he does not look at all the same. He's got a wig on normally then. He's missing his hair now. Unless this is much later? 